Okay, everyone, what we're going to do here is a little large and machine learning research applied to national security. Now, the reason I'm doing this is that whole, you know, artificial intelligence, large in data, machine learning, data mining is becoming more prominent in both academic and policy literature and even law as well. I do a big thing if you took my course on empirical inquiry on law and statistics. This is basically large end data applied to national security. Now, what is going on here? Well, first, this is exactly what large end data is. This is different than saying doing a case study analysis because in this data set called uh, conflict national security, we have three different conflict types, region, I'm not gonna do the region, but the death estimates. We have over 1,000, we have 1,848 cases. That is data points we're gonna see. There's three types of conflict in this data set. One is interstate. This is basically conventional conflict between states, like what's going on between Ukraine and Russia and internal conflict, government against say a rebel group like you see in Colombia, right? And then you have internationalized conflict, which is government against rebel group like above, but with an outside force involved. I like to think of Sierra Leone, where you basically had Liberia involved. Now we have, this is the importance of applying this kind of large end machine learning type of thinking to national security. So there are two types here we can just focus on. One is basic st st uh, statistics, which I did three tables. And this is using RR Studio, R being the statistical environment, R Studio being the user friend interface. I use this because R, R Studio were both created by statisticians for statistics. And I teach the political um a statistics course, as well as uh, our studio with national security. So in this first one here, we'll do this. This is just how many conflict types. What's massive, what's so interesting about this is notice that internally, right? Internal conflict is 1,388 cases. Internationalized, only 416. And then you get interstate, which is only 44. So basically that descriptive statistic tells you, right, for policy that internal is very, very ubiquitous throughout the world, more so than interstate and internationalized, right? And when you look at uh, where is my, you know, internal is 75% of the death estimate, because that's the death estimate, and when you just look at, this is another table I created, where it's just internal, right? You have 82, wait, whoa, that's more than I've even thought of. When you start looking at it, 217,844,829,000, 000, you start seeing interstate is a lot lower, but at the same time, what's interesting about this, because there's only, 44 cases of interstate uh, wars or conflicts. When we run regression analysis, which I'm going to do right now, we'll call it, let's say, killing. And we use the LM function, that is LM, linear modeling. And the dependent variable here is the death estimate. So that is our result. We want to see how, if there's a correlation between the type of conflict, right, conflict type, and the death estimate. So death estimate is the dependent variable, the result, and the independent variable, which is the cause we do is conflict type right there. And then the big data set we have is called conflict and national security. Conflict and national security. There it is. You can see if it's boom. So then we do a summary of the killing, the lamentable killing going on. And we have 
significance, that is, this is our p-value, our level of confidence. When there's three stars, it means it's significant compared to uh, internal. So these are significantly higher, right? Look at the t-value. They're all positive. That means compared to our base here, internal. But we can compare and there'll be three comparisons with a certain... what's the name of a killings with this function a means this is what we call pairwise test which will put all the independent variables together you'll see it when we get the results and then it's the independent uh the independent variables conflict type it all pops up here now you see it is significant. That's the p-value. That's our confidence level. Anything under 0 0.05 is significant. Uh, these are all under 0 0.05, the E being the scientific notation because they're so small. And if you look at this, this number here, negative means there's less internal compared to internationalized, relatively speaking to how many types of conflict there are. Internal, less, it's statistically significant, and internationalized to interstate is less. This is essentially saying, you don't have to know this for the exam, that is how to read this, but this is saying that you're more likely to be killed by an interstate conflict than you are by other conflicts. How is that if interstate is only 44 with lower deaths. Well, the way the regression analysis works is it's saying despite being lower in number here and here, still you're more likely to be killed here for the relatively low amount of interstate conflict. So for a policy conclusion, you would conclude that interstate conflicts, although they're lower in number, produce a significantly, statistically speaking, amount of deaths compared to the other type of conflicts, even though the deaths are sh smaller than these, right? This is so high, I can't even say it, 829,000. So you got to ask yourself, right, as a policy that this is the type of war we really want to stop because it creates so many deaths. But then on the other hand, by just descriptive statistics, internal conflict is extremely large, leading to more deaths, although relative to the amount of conflicts, it doesn't compare to interstate wars. So those two conclusions, one by the advanced inferential regression analysis says you're more likely to die from an interstate conflict like the Ukraine and Russia, two states fighting with each other. Even though there's less conflict, there's more deaths than you are, say, internal. However, the basic descriptive statistics here is that internal, there's more conflicts here in internal, that is a government facing a rebel group, leading to overall more deaths, although as a percentage, they're lower for each uh, internal conflict. So, I mean, it's very, very interesting because as policymakers in national security, you've got to say, how do we address these conflicts? So this is why the Ukraine, I would conclude, and Russian conflict is so deadly because these interstate conflicts have got to be curtailed in order to save lives. And moreover, internal conflicts, we need to stop them before they get out of control because even though they produce less deaths, let's say one internal conflict will produce less deaths than one interstate conflict. Still, there's just so many of these interstate, of these internal conflicts, right? Then interstates, 1,388 producing a large amount of deaths be just because there's so many. So this is very interesting. So I want to recap. This is what we call large end data, right? You take different variables. And this, we're not dealing with region. We're dealing with conflict type, right? Three types, like I went over, interstate, internal, internationalized. And then we're asking ourselves which ones lead to, to more deaths. But it's more complex just to say that 
Because what's interesting about this data set is saying, sure, there's not many interstate conflicts, but they're leading to an inordinate amount of deaths. At the same time, there's way more internal conflicts that lead individually to less deaths, but there's so many, there's more deaths. So we have to be aware and create policies around that. And then we have a good amount of internationalized conflicts as well. And remember this data set was probably created, I, I don't know the exact date, prior to the Ukraine and Russian war. So look at all the deaths there. This would be very significant. I mean, this would be 45, one conflict, and this would be a, even a bigger number taking it higher. So this is how we do it. And this right here is pretty interesting because we're comparing, statistically speaking, if they're significant or not. And that's what we did here. And that's what I basically do with large end data. And then here we have my Columbia. If you took another class with me, you might have seen it, Columbia massacres, where we look at the type of uh, killer. This is an in one internal internal conflict in national security. This is the type, tipo, paramilitaries, which are individuals killing usually the guerrilla groups. Fuerza, which is the military, the, the, the formal military of Colombia. And FARC, the guerrilla group, and this is the amount of victims. This is an amazing data set uh, I've been working on uh, that I got from... Um, uh, Memoria Historica, that's a non-state uh, actor in yeah. Colombia, and they do amazing work, and I was able to get this unique data set. But this, in a nutshell, is what we call large-end data, data mining, uh, you know, uh, regression analysis, even what we call artificial intelligence, because then with this, we can use this information for real policy to address policy analysis and on top of that, uh, I have a nice data set on in one internal conflict with all the victims. Uh, pretty interesting if you are interested in doing uh, large-end data and national security. Thanks a lot, everyone, for listening.